Right, so hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to set up a virtual machine running a Docker container called Chasm. And what Chasm is, is basically a uh, containerized sandbox application that you can access to your web browser. So if you're doing research on a topic and you have to click on a suspicious link that you're not sure about, or if you have a suspicious email and you would double check it, you can go through your web browser and open these documents into this safe container sandbox environment then as soon as you close the um as soon as you close your web browser this docker container just disappears and everything along with it so you stay virus free as you're exploring these different container as you're exploring these different emails and web links that may be suspicious and uh, i'll be honest it's really fun to set it up and it's really fun to use and so i'm going to show you how to do that today now i will post all this over on my website and a link to it will be down below but there are some requirements to chasm and so you'll need at least a 50 gigabyte hard drive space. You need two virtual CPUs for it, and you're going to need at least four gigabytes of RAM for just the bare minimum for it. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set all this up in a virtual machine inside of Linode. And if you don't already have a Linode account, what you can do is click on the link below, and you can create a new account and get a hundred dollar free credit to explore with. And um, Speaking from experience, it would take a long time for you to use up that $100 credit. There's lots of things you can do with it. So follow the link in the description below and just create your new profile to use it. So once you go to Linode and log in, you're going to create, we're going to go to Linode. Now, Linode is great because it has a bunch of these pre-configured virtual machines here, so you can go to the marketplace and look up different things like this uh, that are available. For example, you have BitNinja already set up, uh, FileCloud, GitLab. Uh, last I looked, they didn't have Chasm. There's WordPress already set up. Uh, like I said, they don't already have one with Chasm, so we're going to go to Distributions first. And we're going to choose an image. And the prerequisite for Chasm is to be running Ubuntu 2004. So we're going to select Ubuntu 2004. Select a region somewhere close to you. Now, if you... you if you look at the prerequisites listed below, you're going to need at least four gigabytes of RAM, and you're going to need 50 gigabyte hard drive space and two CPUs. So the bare minimum dedicated four gigabyte here, but that's, as you can see, 50, uh, 0.054 cents an hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to shared CPU. And to stay at four GPU RAM with two CPUs, and 15 gigabytes of hard drive space, you can do a Linode 4 gigabyte of share space, and that's a 0 .30 cents, 36 cents an hour or 24 cents a month. So we're gonna select that, and then give it the basics like a root password. And that should be all we need for here, so we're gonna click Create Linode, and that's going to run. And as you can see, it's revisioning it. And the cool thing about Linode is you can run an SSH console right from here to see what the status is. And since it's still provisioning, we're probably just going to get the spinning line. And through the power of video editing magic, we are now finished. And so what I always do is I'm going to close this and I'm going to open up, well first I'm going to copy this SSH access key. And then I'm going to open up Mobile X term on my computer and paste it. And it's going to ask me for permission and ask for the password I gave it. And there I am. I am now logged into my Linode virtual machine. Now, before we set up Chasm, let me give some space in here. Now, before we set up Chasm, we're going to have to create a swap partition. And that's pretty easy. We're going to run these commands here, and I'll post them on my website. Link to all those that would be below. All right, now we're going to cap the swap file to make sure that it successfully created it. And there it is, a one gigabyte swap drive. And so now what we're going to set up is we're going to put it in the FS tab file. That way, if it ever restarted, it will stay there. So now we got to download the install file for Chasm. And that's as simple as running a wget command to the website and pull in the tar jeep file. 
and that ran really fast. So now we are going to extract the installation file from what we just downloaded, and that's a simple tar command of the gzip file. Again, all these commands can be found on the website, which will be listed below. And so now we're going to run the install script that we just downloaded. And that's the end user agreement. We're going to agree, and there it goes. All right, that actually took a really long time. But thanks to the magic of video editing, we are now done. And as you can see, after it's finished, you'll get an installation complete, and it will give you some login credentials for Chasm. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all this, copy it, and then open up Notepad and paste it. So now we're ready to attach it to our web browser. Now, I will tell you, it works the absolute best in Chrome, but the installation process for Brave or Firefox are going to be the exact same thing. So we're going to open up a Chrome browser, and first we need to go to the IP address of our server. So this is a Chasm server, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back our node server, and there's our IP address. We're going to go, paste it, and go. And it will actually work if you put HTTPS in there. So you're going to come into a login page, and your first login is going to be this right here, the admin local email address. Copy and paste and then the password that it gave for it. So you are now logged into your Chasm workspace. And from here, even from here, what you can do is you can click on workspace and you can tell it to open up a virtual machine with these different apps in it, such as Brave, Chrome, Firefox, or Tor, if you want to be completely private in what you're doing. And what it's going to do is going to open up over here and give you some information. This is your control panel, so you can copy paste and go back and forth from this virtual machine to your actual browser. Okay, that's actually going a lot slower than I expected, so let's do this. We're going to delete session. It's going to take us back to here, and so let's do something simple like Chrome. And there we go. Is it Reddit? Click on the link. Do whatever you want to do in here, and this is actually inside of a virtual machine. And then as soon as I go over here and tell it to delete session, everything in there is gone, completely gone. So now let's play with what the really cool part of this is, and that's putting it in your browser. So I'm going to go to Firefox, since that's what I actually use on a regular basis. And we're going to add the Chasm extension. Uh, as you can see, it's already set up on mine, but it'd be simple as looking for Chasm plugin for Chrome or add-on, I'm sorry, Chasm add-on for Firefox. And we would get extension, but I already have it. But it's uh, it's pretty simple to install there. So what I'm going to do is once once you have it installed, you'll click on Settings and Manage Extension. And then for Firefox, we're going to go to Options. And this is where we're going to paste in our server address again. From the, this is for the node server. And remember, we got to put HTTPS colon slash slash. And then I'm going to tell it to open a new window, and I'll click Save. So once that is saved, we'll open up another tab and then go to something like Reddit. And then just any of these links, click right click on it. You'll have an option for open link in Chasm. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to advance, accept risk, and continue. And here we are back at the login page. And so again, you're going to give it that password and that email login. And as the messages gave you, we don't have a default image set up, and I'm going to set up Firefox as my default. So then we're going to do this again. And so this time you see it's going to open a Firefox browser. And this is inside a virtual machine. It's inside the cloud. So as soon as you Remove it, everything is gone, and it still works just the same as it would inside your browser. So that's really cool. And again, the setup process looks the same regardless of if you're using Chrome or Firefox or whatever. And so we are going to close this session. So if you go back to your main page by doing HTTPS, colon slash slash, 
and the web address for your server. And since we've already logged in once, it's not going to ask for the login information again. What you can do if you want to change that password or change the username, you just click on your initials up here, which is AD for admin, and then go to profile, and then reset password, and put the current password and put in a new password. Complicated enough, it, but that's the gist of it. Now, let's say you want to have it running in two different browsers at the same time, uh, maybe once for like a personal account and once for a working account, something like that. That's as simple as going to users, create an admin user, and then user two, and then give them, we'll give them the, that suggested password. There you go. And then submit that person. And then all you gotta do is log in in that other browser as user two, and that way you won't have to like log in. Uh, that way you will stay logged in in Firefox, and let's say the other browser's Chrome, you'll stay logged in at Chrome, and you don't have to keep logging in every time you use it, which is just a slightly annoying thing about it. But uh, if we go back to Workspaces, see it even has like an Ubuntu virtual machine you can set up in here, and it has Telegram, Discord, different things in here you can set up, so that's really cool, and some stuff for you to check out later on. Leave me any comments you have down below. I thank you for staying to the end of the video. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe so you know when I can bring out future videos. And be sure to click the link to sign up for your free Lino to sign up for your first time for Lenovo and get your hundred dollar free credit. And like I said, a hundred dollars is gonna last you a long time because this this virtual machine that we got going on right now was what twenty five dollars a month, uh, point zero thirty five cents an hour, and this hasn't even been up thirty minutes yet, and I'm fixing to kill it right now. So yeah, I'm not even out two cents on it. So that gives you an idea of how long it would take for the $100 free credit to run out on you. So do that. Check out my website. Constantly posting free resources on my website for you and other IT professionals to help you do better at your job or if you're just coming up to find the resources you need to learn and grow. Um, mention anything that I need to add to it or take away from it and give me your views on it. Thank you guys.